let's go into the book. Yes, yes. Okay, so for for this podcast, we wanted to talk about reparations plan for for man. Mm -hmm. So let's jump into um, Isaiah 56 and Isaiah 12, and let's just get into it. Well, as as you stated earlier, salvation, we really believe salvation is, is our solution. God has given us a solution to deal with you know the perils of, of poverty the perils of the fallen nature that uh that man uh experienced you know when 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 he fell i mean um god is god is god has given us a salvation that's so great that's so great that that it will enable us to overcome overcome even even black america and all that we've been through here in america we still have an ability and that has that actually has given us the ability to be sustained through you know if it wasn't for the faith and the commitment of our ancestors while they were going through slavery to be committed to be committed to um believing what the word of god says and believing in equality and believing in those things we wouldn't be where we are today as black america i was i was uh rereading the um the new york times article on the 1619 project and um forgive me for not being able to call this sister's name um but uh her name is i want to say, is it nicole man i can't i can't uh, recall but she um she brought out an interesting point of how of how our ancestors believed in you know the declaration of independence they believed in the constitution they believed that god was for them and they believed that in spite of being treated uh, you know, differently. They believe that and they held on to that. And that's been passed down to us. That's been passed down for the past four generations and 400 years to, to us today to believe that salvation is the solution. Now, I don't think that they had the full scope of what salvation meant, you know, because they were taught differently by the white slave owners. Uh, remember, Europe, Europeans hijacked everything. They even hijacked the gospel. So they twisted the gospel. They created the slave bible and they took out all the bible all of the scriptures about prosperity and 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 independence and value so they they stripped of that but uh that's why we got a lot of our old hymns that speak of you know getting getting my reward in the sweet by and by that's where all those hymns came from it, it wasn't about the now because now forget about it we slaves now and they ain't gonna let us have nothing so they had to come up with with songs that spoke of when i get to heaven and that's why a lot of them will kill themselves and commit suicide so they wouldn't have to deal with what they were dealing with here on earth but they would rather be in heaven so they can get all their reward well salvation is more comprehensive than that our salvation speaks to our wealth creation it speaks to our our health it speaks to our defense i mean uh, to being defended it speaks to our um being made whole and it speaks to our being protected like that those are the five wells of salvation that uh isaiah 12 3 brings out it says with joy do we draw from the wells of salvation the five worlds of salvation it's wealth creation is first and foremost that is first on god's agenda if you if you look through the word of god and you see the covenants that god I think it was six covenants that god established with individuals every last one of those covenants focus on wealth creation and health maintenance every last one of them was about wealth and wealth was always first god would always look to make his men and their families wealthy because god knows the importance of having an economic base by which you can you could build upon he even said he says i've given you the power in 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 uh, deuteronomy 8 18 i've given you the power to get wealth why that you may establish my covenant in the earth like you can't establish god's covenant in the earth poor you can't establish god's covenant in the earth without wealth and that's that's where we have to focus and that's where salvation is focused god's salvation for man is his reparations plan for man his reparative plan for man we have to see it as such. That is God's reparative plan. When man failed, he was injured. He was broken. He started to decay. And God, in the very beginning, when he told Satan, the seed of the woman who shall brew your, your head, shall bruise his heel, that was him saying, I'm going to save my man. I'm going to repair my man. I'm going to restore my man. I'm going to, I'm going to re recompense my man. I'm going to give him everything he needs to overcome poverty. I'm going to give him everything he needs to overcome the spiritual death that took place. I'm going to give him everything he needs to fix his soul. I'm going to give him everything he needs to heal his mind. I'm going to give him all of that is contained in our salvation. And we have to see it as such. But that speaks to the nature of who God is. Well, Most before before you get to that, real quick, real quick. So yeah. so you, you 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 touched on touched on a lot of good stuff. Um, but y'all got to cut me off. Y'all got to cut me off. I keep going. Right. right. <laughs> I'm seeing that. Y'all got to cut me off. It it's going to come down to it. Yeah, so so me before, before, before you cut me off. <laughs> <laughs> so so we, we we know god as as a remunerator and i, I don't want to get into that just yet but yeah, yeah. before we get to that part 
there's this this um this mindset and and there's also this um use of of the word uh well i i would categorize it as the letter of of the law where people say you can't serve god and mammon but what's the spirit behind that right because it, it doesn't make sense that you know god wants us to be wealthy but the way that they dictated or the way that they interpret it is that you know god doesn't want us to focus on money right you know so, but so that is a that is a slave master's mindset right and let's just call it what it is like the thing that I love about the 1619 project, um, Kaylin, can you look up 1619 project? I wanna I wanna get this young lady's name. I, I wanna do her justice um and get her name. But um she 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 relates the things that are taking place within our societal construct today. She she relates them to what what took place during slavery in that society. How there's so many things that 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 we operate in today there's so many uh, functions that we deal with today nicole hannah jones that's her name nicole hannah jones um she she she, she relates how they all derived from the um the slave culture and she does a beautiful job in knitting together how we can relate so so and she really did it deal with the white folks who say well i didn't own no slaves and i wasn't born back then no you're still living out the derivatives of what the slave culture and the slave environment produced. You're still living it out from the educational structure to the Wall Street to assist, to the to relationships to, to politics. All of these, all of the all of the the things by which we we operate in today were connected to slavery. Like the Constitution itself. Like if you if you live by the Constitution, you're living by a document that was greatly influenced by slavery, or them wanting to maintain slavery. Right. So um, that's a slave master's mindset is to get you in a position where you don't worry about money. Right. You can't love God and serve God and and mammon. Right. They trick you up like that. But really, that scripture is not bringing out the thought of you can't be wealthy and serve God. Or why would God tell you I've given you the power to get wealth, but then turn around and tell you you can't serve me and be wealthy. No, the idea behind that is this. So um, you have to look at look at it holistically. God never intended for us to trade our time for money, right? His intention was to trade your gifting for money. That's why he gave us a gift set. Romans 12, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians 12, 7 says, the Spirit giveth, giveth expressly to all men, speaking in the context of that scripture, is the gifts that, God, that the Spirit gives to us, but he gives that for every man to profit. That word profit in the Greek means to make money. Literally, it means to gain money. That's what it talks about. So the giftings that God has given you, the calling that God has called you to, to um, as the apparatus by which you are to display your gifting to the world, right, is the means by which God has given you to exchange for money. It's not our time. You, our time is the most is the most precious commodity that we have, and God intends to spend that time for you to spend the bulk of that time with Him, in living life. Well, if you're focused on making money, if you're exchanging your time for money, now that limits what you can do. So when God said you can't, when Jesus said you can't serve God and mammon, he was talking about you have to get out of the mindset that the people who perverted capitalism put you in to use your time, to exchange your time for money. In order for you to do that, though, you got to think like an entrepreneur. Well, as we know, God is an entrepreneur. Jesus was a businessman. When you come as a king, you come in as a businessman. He wasn't a religious figure at all. The problem is the church has, has, has revealed him and presented him as a religious figure and not as the king that he was. When you, when you, when you label him as a king, you have to label him as an entrepreneur. Yeah. You label him as an entrepreneur, now you gotta be thinking as a business-minded person. That's why Jesus said, know ye not that I must be about my father's, my business. father's business. That's why he said that. He didn't say my father's religion. He said my father's business. Salvation is God's business. God is in the business of saving souls first, then building that person economically, making sure they're healthy, making sure they're defended, making sure they're protected, and making sure they come into a wholeness. And so when you deal with people who say, well, you can't serve God and mammon, you gotta say, well, uh, you're right. You can't serve God and mammon, but God never designed us to serve, to, to serve God and mammon or to exchange our time for money. When we think like entrepreneurs, then we get out of the time aspect. And we get into, I'm desired to, I'm, I'm created to produce, 
products through my gifting that people can purchase that's not demanding of my time. 